I very rarely accept pre-builds from companies for videos, but when MSI reached out to me out of the blue offering to send over this beast standing oh, next to me, boy. I just couldn't say no for a couple of reasons. The first one is considering my history with MSI pre-builds. Oh, that's not good. Oh no, I killed it. I guess this one wasn't that bad. It's probably not gonna poison your drinking water. I think it's hilarious that MSI thought it was a good idea to send the system to me. And the second reason is MSI took some of the most powerful hardware in the world and stuffed it into a case that looks like this. And I just can't see a way in which that does not end terribly. I wonder what kind of e-waste peripherals the system this fancy comes with. It's... Oh. Although in all fairness, MSI pre-builds do usually come with some primo e-waste. Kill that! Oh. Ooh, we've got some nice raised cool marketing on the box. And in this box, we get a power cable, a 16-pin power adapter for NVIDIA graphics cards, some case mounting crap, and a big cleaning cloth for them fingerprints, but no e-waste peripherals. It's very heavy. This is very well packaged, so your game unlimited system should survive even the most negligent delivery person. I see why they gave you the microfiber cloth with it. Oh! Okay. I really hope this system was reviewed by someone before me, because if this is the state they come out of the factory in, that is not a good sign. Because I couldn't have soiled it that hard just unboxing it, right? And while I was trying and failing to wipe all of the mysterious grease off it, I couldn't help but notice some shocking build quality. Ugh, it's put together like a Tesla, what the hell? Aside from none of the panels fitting together correctly, the material choices were much less high-end gaming system and more dollar store Lego plastic. Look at that. And aside from the Fisher Price build quality, I'm just not sold on the way it looks. I don't know, the aesthetic to me kind of looks like something that was the result of the vivisection of several different pieces, and they just like glued the resulting bits together. On the front, we've got this control panel thing, which is like a touch screen, which lets you do things. Next to that is what looks like a strip of illumination. We have what looks like more functional front ventilation in front of this pretty big ventilated panel over the side of the system. And it looks reasonably porous, so I don't know, maybe I overreacted. Maybe temperatures will be fine. And then on top of the system, next to this very cool branding, we have even more ventilation. Oh, and in terms of front I.O., it's pretty good. And you know what they say, there's nothing classier than super low quality piano black plastic. Around the back, we've got the standard pre-built small exhaust fan, above which is a very exciting graphics card, which we'll talk about in a second. And finally on the back, in terms of of rear I.O., it's pretty anemic for a system in this weight class. Now, in terms of ventilation, this case looks better than I was expecting from the pictures. But then you remember that there's an i9-13900KF in here and an RTX 4090, which results in a combined potential TDP of 700 watts. So, yeah, I don't know. I think we're gonna have to open it up and have a look at the cooling solution in here. Oh yeah, that comes off very easily. And then under that, wow, there is some serious cooling under there. Never mind. And the side panel seems very porous. Like we can see the case through it, but the build quality on it is unsettlingly alien wary. Look at that. But putting that aside, in here we have some serious hardware. Up here is our RTX 4090, which I can't wait to see how this performs. And it's a 4090 with a decent cooler on it. As far as I understand, this is the Ventus 3 version of it, which also has this silent storm cooling thing attached to the top, which we'll have a closer look at in a second. On the side, we've got a 280 mil radiator for the CPU, which 
is a pretty chonky boy. Below that is some MSI power supply, which again we'll have a closer look at later on. Next to which is a mechanical drive, which is quite funny to see on a system this fancy. Oh, that like slides open. Cool, okay. Oof, that is a concerningly soft plastic radiator mount. Ooh, and the interior is very OEM gray. It's also a real bare bones looking motherboard in here. It does have dual channel RAM, but for almost $5,000, it doesn't get any points for that, especially considering it looks like RAM they dug out of a bin somewhere. Power supply wise, we have a thousand watt standard ATX MSI unit, which should be enough for the system. Oh, they did really take a page out of Alienware's book and just glue a bunch of plastic crap to the outside of an office PC case. Oh, that's a bit disappointing. Apparently the silent storm cooling thing is just a duct that funnels air into the 4090. I don't know, I was kind of expecting something a bit more high tech than just a bit of plastic. Okay, so with that, let's reassemble the Plastic Fantastic and see what kind of temperatures we get while gaming, which I am really excited to see. Oh yeah, MSI also sent over this monitor with the system, for some reason, uh, so we're gonna use it to test the system with. The screen is flashing a dragon at me. Oh, they're clearly very proud of the design of the thing because the background also has it on. I'm not sure if I want to see it twice, um, but you know, at least the wallpaper version does look like it's in significantly better condition. Oh, Norton. Yeah, we'll look at VD in a second. Ooh, here is our 13900 KF. And this is our 64 gigs of RAM, which is running at its base frequency. So they didn't set it at the rated speed of the RAM, which is a bit of a shame, uh, but we'll test the performance impact of that later in the video. When it comes to the venereal bloatware situation, the system was pretty good. Aside from Norton, there wasn't a whole lot on there. There is the standard MSI control center thing that wants you to download more crap, but other than that, it's pretty clean. Now that we've fired up the system, I do quickly want to look at the functionality of the screen, which you can see I've barely touched and it's already disgusting. This is the kind of stuff that you can do with it. Shortcut, for example, lets you launch software on your desktop from here, and as you can see, it's very, very responsive. There's also a gaming mode, which as far as I can tell, doesn't do anything. Although I think you can set up gaming profiles in the MSI software for it. Oh yeah, and you can also set your RGB to different colors with it. Very useful. Um, so yeah, let's play some games on it. Now I'm starting off with GTA 5 purely out of habit and at 4K, very high settings. We are pegged at about 190 frames per second, which is the point, as you can see, where GTA 5 starts to descend into a stutter fest. So <laughs> GTA 5 is basically unplayable because of, well, it running too well. So now with Battlefield 5, we are running at 4K ultra settings and we're occasionally bumping off the frame rate limiter. So let me quickly deal with that. So we've uncapped our frame rate and we're almost at 300 frames per second now <laughs> and 4K ultra settings. So that is pretty wild. Temperature wise, I'm kind of gonna have to eat my words from the beginning of the video because considering what's happening here, they are very good. The ambient temperature in the room is 16 degrees Celsius. So that helps, but it's barely breaking a sweat here. But it's only been a short period of time, so let's game for a while and then I'll get back to you on the temperatures. So I've been playing for about 45 minutes now and temperature wise, I'm actually really impressed with the system. It is audible. You know, you can, you can hear it. But in this 16 degrees Celsius room, we are getting very reasonable temperatures. And in terms of performance, it's crazy. This 4090 runs Battlefield 5 at 4K ultra settings, like it's 1080p medium. Next up, we have Cyberpunk running at 4K ultra settings. And this is where things start to get a little tough because we're not quite consistently sitting 
at 60 frames per second. And bear in mind, this is without ray tracing on. The, the system is quite noisy, but for this kind of like OEM pre-built in the form factor, it's not nearly as noisy as you would expect. And considering that all of the ventilation is on, oh, oh, terrible things are happening. Uh, considering that all of the ventilation is on the other side of the case, if you have the system on your right hand side, it kind of blows the noise in that direction. So having said that, let's move over to some ray tracing action. Ultra, so that's the same settings that we have for everything else. 40 frames per second, wow, Cyberpunk does not mess about, especially at 4K. Let, let's set it up to Psycho and see what that does. Oof, it's pretty crazy to see a $5,000 system brought to its knees like this. But there's another way around it. We can use some of this. Whoa, that's made a huge difference. Turning quality DLSS on, we have gotten like three times the frame rate, pretty much, that we got before. And considering that it's DLSS for 4K, and we're actually using a 1440p panel here, you can't really notice the DLSS is on. Anyway, enough screwing around with Cyberpunk. Let's set the RAM to its rated speed and see how much that helps the performance. Now, in terms of BIOS, this is an MSI system and they do motherboards. So we actually get a usable looking BIOS. Useful looking, but it turns out it's one of the most useless BIOSes on any MSI system I've looked at so far. How does that make any sense? It does have some pretend overclocking features, but I couldn't set the X and P profiles for the RAM, so I was stuck with the base DDR5 speed. At least you can turn on rebar, which was off by default, so there's that. So at the end of the day, temperature-wise, the system was a whole lot better than I was expecting. It really could have been a dumpster fire, and it wasn't. And it also performs like a roided-up Olympian. But it cost $5,000 and has a 4090 in it. Obviously it does. And I just can't get past the fact that the build quality would be unacceptable on a system costing a fifth the price. If I pay $5,000 for a PC, it better be hewn from Mithril, not just made from a wafer tin with a bunch of plastic crap glued to it. Anyway, with that, thank you MSI for sending over the system. And um, yeah, with that, it brings me to the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, bye-bye.